In this series of podcasts through the Visionary Chronicles, uh, we're going to talk about what makes a brand truly visionary. You know, is it product? Is it innovation, culture, marketing? You know, what success formula has sustained iconic brands such as Apple, Nike, Adidas, you know, allowed them to maintain their vision and brand ethos for generations? You know, in the Visionary Brand, we'll explore what's at the core of these generational brands and how one becomes visionary along with discussing foundational principles needed to achieve visionary status, defining the origins around creating this masterpiece and why having all these attributes is so elusive for these brands. The visionary brand outlines the strategic elements to implementing this formula through defining your vision, creating your path, through foundational pillars of success, creating a continual flow of innovative ideas and products, developing breakaway design strategy, maintaining premium positioning in your selected marketplace, and building a passionate culture and one that others will want to be a part of. Being a market-driving versus a market-driven company and strategy around that. Becoming a leader versus a follower. And having the courage to be great in whatever you do. With this book, you'll learn how to take your brand to the next level by defining your vision, foundational principles, and building a continual flow of innovations through a breakaway product strategy, maintaining premium positioning, and creating a passionate culture embraced by your brand and your community. So I look forward to taking you through these podcasts specifically around the visionary brand, the success formula behind the world's most visionary brands. Today in the Visionary Chronicles, we're going to talk about the creative engine. This is a chapter I have in my book about those creative, the crazy ones inside of these legendary generational brands. Um, You know, looking at all these remarkable visionary brands, you know, all of them, I find, have built this, what I call this creative engine. You know, it's this process inside of the beginning of a great product, the vision behind an ideation process, allowing the freedom for these creators to build something that eventually could become disruptive in their marketplace. But what I find is that all of these brands have built this creative engine process that first and foremost provides us freedom to express ideas regardless of the reality. This is where I find in, again, having interviewed many companies, worked with and for both large cap, small cap, mid cap companies across the world, great consumer product driven brands like Oakley, K-Swiss, Nike, Adidas, TaylorMade, Callaway, all of these brands have all built this foundational structure around a creative process and this engine that allows for the freedom to express these ideas regardless of their potential or their eventual reality in the marketplace. The intention here is that the ability for those that aren't part of that process to stay out of the room, allow the freedom of these creators to build something great. So these brands understand that to lead, to be a category leader, to have breakaway innovation that I talk about in the book, the ability for you to have a disruptive idea turn into reality. You must have this process of freedom to those who are building these great products through the ideas they have that may blur reality. You know, and Steve Jobs is very famous with the reality distortion field, but these brands understand that in order to lead in your category consistently, you must be the one to set the standard for your category. And what I mean by that is when we were at Oakley, Jim Gennard, the famous founder of Oakley, the most inspirational speaker that I have ever heard, 
instilled into our bloodlines on the product team and the design team and everyone associated with that brand is that we didn't care about the competition. If we are leading in our category, those fall, those who are part of that category follow us. So inevitably what happens is if you are the leader and you are presenting product to those that are purchasing your product, those are the ones that are going to have an affinity for your brand. The ones that will continue to purchase your brand will continue to upgrade with your brand and ones that will be loyal to your brand. So in order to lead, you must have a leadership mentality, one that's relentless on innovation, one that's committed to disruption, one that is loyal to those who want to be part of a brand that's making a difference in the marketplace and the lifestyle of those consumers purchasing those products or providing those services. So these brands, all of them know that innovation is inherently risky, much less disruption. The creative engine end goal, the pinnacle of this creative engine process is disruption. And I say, Disruption is innovation times 10. So innovation is a step to disruption. Disruption is completely innovating the way that we do things or the way that we see things. It's this distortion becoming reality in our lives. So these brands know that an innovation or much less a disruption in the industry is inherently risky and there's going to be failure after failure, after failure. But one failure is one step closer to success. As I famously quote Thomas Edison, 10,000 failures on the light bulb. At 9,999, if he had given up, we probably wouldn't have the level of disruption that's happened since he commercialized that light bulb. So when you look at the strategy of this creative engine, You'll need to embrace that failure, knowing that failure is part of that creative process along the path of eventual success. So without risk, without failure, success does not happen. And embracing this failure is not merely voicing your acceptance, but more importantly, showing your support for the process and its eventual outcome, whether it's a success or whether it's a failure. I can't emphasize that enough when I talk about this in the book and the creative engine is this ability for great generational brands and leaders to embrace this innovation process through failure is critical to its long-term success. Realizing sometimes you will succeed in any time and many other times you'll fail. More often than not, you'll fail more than you succeed. But the intention is here, you're moving along a path to success. You know, the intention here is that you take two steps forward and one step back versus one step forward and two steps back. When I talk about this two step forward versus two steps back, it's in relation to Many times products need to come off the drawing board because they just either aren't commercially viable or we need to find an alternative path and or find an adaptable technology from what we're creating that will work in our current core organic product. So that's a mouthful, but what it gets to is that brands, in order to push this reality distortion through disruption, find whether it's a complete product or service that completely disrupts the industry, but through that path, find innovations to recreate or reinvent their category or product or service, or adapt what they're currently doing through line extensions along that supply and demand curve. So one big thing we look at and we talk about all the time in the book is this pipeline of innovation. And the pipeline of innovation is derived through having a disruptive product that's a breakaway technology on the front end of early adopters that purchase that product. 
not the revenue you would expect on the back end of the curve on those that are the late adopters, but what that allows you to do is move that breakaway technology throughout the entire supply chain, build line extensions and drawdowns on different price points, take it off the market at the height of its demand, because you know on the front end you have a new product or a new generation coming in that they will purchase at a higher price point, at a higher margin for the company as a whole. So these are all things that are part of this creative engine process that are the fruit of the labor that goes on in the front end. So again, having the ability for a brand, a true brand that has a vision, they need to have a creative process that again, provides for the freedom to express ideas regardless of the reality in embracing risk through failure. And the process of innovation is risky. But as Seth Godin said, safe is risky. So you want to play it risky, but also be frugal and efficient and effective throughout that process. So the creative engine needs the fuel. The fuel for me is the generation of ideas and pathways to ensure they will eventually succeed in commercializing these great ideas. This fuel, these ideas are what generate the realization of the future vision of your company and your brand. So I say the process, knowing you'll need to have markers along the way, not to venture too far down the road on an idea with no chance of success. That's why I mentioned the analogy and the reference to the supply and demand curve and the breakaway ideas that happen through disruption in the marketplace within your category or service and having those as part of your front end pipeline of innovation, you can serve for generations. To me, that analogy in the supply and demand chain is a wave to me. So in the book, I mentioned this pipeline of innovation through the creative engine and process to ensure that those ideas are flushed out and there's a process to ensuring that those that work, those that don't, and those that are piece of that overall idea generation become part of either your organic product, a new product, or a complete disruption in the marketplace. So again, knowing the process, you'll need to have those markers along the way so you don't venture too far down the road on this creative engine. If you don't, this is gonna lead to frustration from both the product development and financial perspective. So you wanna make sure that on the product side and the creative engine, you have those markers, those points along the way that you either stop or continue down that path of commercializing that product. And I use as a, a reference point, not relative to a normal consumer product brands, but I always talk about the level of frustration from a design perspective. There's a couple levels of frustration. One is those that don't have the freedom to create, the freedom to have an ideation process on the front end of your seasonal line planning, uh, whatever it may be, not having the, the freedom to create these great ideas and put them down on paper and have the opportunity to bring them to reality for your brand. And I, and I say this analogy from a concept car standpoint, can you imagine that every idea that you have is watered down and eventually commercialized in a form that was nowhere near what you had on paper at the original outset of your design? So concept car designers are probably the most frustrated designers in the marketplace because they have no ability to take that beautiful design off paper and make it reality. So consider it fortunate those designers that are part of a brand or part of a product service that have the ability to bring their vision to reality. So eliminating that frustration not only from the design perspective, but also those trying to develop that product and also those running the numbers on how viable it is in the marketplace. The other side that this creative engine does as well is 
you need to understand very clearly throughout this process your core competency, your ability to bring this idea to reality. So part of this process as you're going through it is if there's no chance within your core competency, and this really goes back to the sourcing and the capabilities of your manufacturers, to turn that vision into reality, it becomes fruitless. So either you increase the core competency of your sourcing platform or you eliminate and or get rid of the idea. So there's all kinds of pieces of this puzzle, but it all starts on the creative process with an ideation platform that allows for the freedom to great, put great ideas on paper, up on the board, and allow the opportunity to commercialize those. And also, as you go through this creative process, you need to have clear ongoing defining expectations within the creative engine that allows for a definitive structure that allows for this freedom of expression. You know, the crazy ones, the visionaries, they're set on the future and the intent to make it a reality. But make sure this process is clearly defined, expectations from timing, expectations from commercialization, and also the reality of being able to bring this into the marketplace and the category of business that you have a core competency in. And as a result of defining this process, those who are part of it, the creative geniuses, have a clear directive that does not change relative to economic conditions or having to satisfy quarterly results. There are three critical areas that I found in ensuring, and I put these in the book as well, and we'll talk about these in, in, in more in depth as we go through the different podcasts on the visionary brand. But there are three critical areas in which they will have a laser focus in ensuring that this creative engine continues to flow with ideas. And each of these is either aspirational or inspirational and or both. But each of these is a defining principle of the brand and the company and what their long-term intention is in the marketplace. So the first is be a market driver versus being market driven. The most renowned brands on the planet are the ones who understand what it takes to create the future. They have a vision others can't see, much less defining a path to its eventual reality. So building products others never knew they needed is part of that vision of being market, being a market driver. And being a market driver, and with it you command loyalty through your community, through your team, and pricing power in the marketplace. The second is being disruptive. A lot of people talk about being disruptive. It's those that have a commitment and a strategy and a process around how they're going to be disruptive and why they're going to be disruptive. You know, that's one thing I've found when people talk about being disruptive. The first question I, I ask is why? You know, why and, and what are you trying to achieve? So, you know, understand you must set a goal that to others seems unreasonable or unachievable. And I talk about this in the book about disruptive strategies. And both are good barometers of an idea becoming disruptive. You know, the, the word disruptive gets thrown around a lot lately. You know, think of innovation on a completely different level, times 10. I talked about it quite frequently in the book as well. And innovation can be thought of as a step along the path to eventual disruption. So be disruptive, but be committed to it and understand why, when, how you're going to be disruptive within your category, product, or service. So have that process driven through the creative engine to be disruptive, to be a market driver. And the third is be different. Your ability to set a culture driven by being different, is a key component to attracting the talent you'll need to sustain long-term innovation and disruption. And what I mean by that is that if you establish an authentic culture of being different, giving people the freedom to pitch their ideas, to see those ideas come to life, to have the ability to be part of that overall piece 
of a puzzle and a culture that's second to none that others envy you working there is a culture you want to be a part of. So being different, your ability to set a culture driven by being different and the ability for you to sustain long-term innovation and disruption is driven by your ability to attract that talent that also wants to be part of that vision. So you want to make sure that without a culture led by those who embrace being different, you'll not succeed in attracting the dedicated, loyal talent you'll need to become a market driver. So each of these three are intertwined with one another in the strategy around the process, the creative engine of being a market driver, not being driven by the market. You don't want to be driven by what others are doing. You want to have others be driven by what you're doing. So be a market driver. The second is being disruptive. And the third is being different, providing a culture where people can thrive. People can be different. They can have others being envious of them being behind the four walls that you happen to be in. So, Market driving, disruption, and being different. All three key pieces of that puzzle in the process. So as we move along in the next segment of the Visionary Brand podcast series, we're going to discuss these three three key elements. Being a market driver versus market driven, number one. Number two, being disruptive. Number three, being different. You know, these are the ones that will set your path to the future. You know, without them, without these key integral foundational principles, you'll not succeed. With them, you'll greatly increase your chances of long-term success. So we, lo- we look forward to talking with you on the next Visionary Brand Podcast on these three areas. And thank you for your time. And hopefully you'll find that these elements in the process in a clearly defined Creative Engine process will help you succeed with your business strategy, brand, long-term as well.